How to edit like Enrico Fusati. My approach in Lightroom. Enrico has a very unique, very dreamy editing style, which I'm a big, big fan of. He even participated in one of my videos where seven pro photographers are editing the same RAW file and he had one of the most unique outcomes of that video. Of course, his images are kind of more on the heavy side of editing, but I really, really love this look. So how can we replicate that? We need to look at obvious things he's doing. So of course, he has a very heavy glow effect on top of his images. Another thing we can look out for is highlights and shadows. Usually he works with very, very deep shadows, but the shadows aren't clipping. So that's kind of important to keep in mind. And then on the other hand, we have the highlights. These of course can be dependent on the image, but he kind of works with a lot of bright highlights. Plus he also likes that glowing spots on the brightest parts of his shots. And then of course, finally, we also have the colors. For his forest scenes, he works with green tones, but those are kind of desaturated and are more on the green side. That means there isn't much of a yellow color tone in them. But you will see what I mean in a minute. So let us turn this raw file into this image in the style of Enrico Fossati. And as always, if you want to follow along, feel free to download the raw file from the link in the description of the video. And now let's begin. Alright, so first off, down below in the film strip, you can see a series of different images. That's because looking at the first file, you will notice we are super close to those trees in the foreground, which in turn brings them out of focus. However, I want this whole image to be sharp from front to back. That's why we are going to include focus stacking, but more on that later. First, of course, we need to do the raw adjustments. So therefore, I'm going to be taking the first image right here and Let's start with the basic adjustments. I'm going to open up the basic panel and I want to change the profile from Adobe Color to Adobe Standard. Right away, this will lessen the contrast and my goal for the basic adjustments is to balance the exposure, then adjust the white balance. Overall, I want to bring up the exposure first. This will make everything brighter. At the same time, we are running into issues quickly with the highlights because at this point, especially after increasing the exposure, some of these highlights are blown out as shown in the histogram. So that's an issue. We're going to fix that by bringing down the highlights. So let's go to minus 60. Then I still think the darkest parts are a little too dark. I'm going to raise the shadows to bring out more details and make those shadows just a bit brighter this way. Okay, nice. I'm also going to increase the blacks. This will not only make the darkest parts brighter, it will also help introduce this very soft look. And I think that's a common thing Enrico is doing with his images, always increasing the blacks to raise the black point. And then let me also bring back a little contrast by using the whites slider. I'm going to raise it. This will help make the brightest areas of the image brighter. Of course, we need to pay close attention to the histogram because if we go too crazy, we will introduce clipping back again. And that's of course not what we want. So I'm going with something like plus 30, which should be okay. Nice. So I would say that's pretty much it for the base exposure of this scene. I quite like how this is looking. But you already can notice the white balance. It does look okay and natural for this scene at the moment. But since we want to emulate Enrico Fusati's look, we need to change it a bit. Right now, the white balance seems a little bit too warm for a forest scene. So my approach here is to bring down the temperature, introducing a lot more coldness to this shot. So maybe something like this. I know there are still a lot of yellow tones throughout this image, but don't worry about that for now. We're going to target those later on with color grading. For now, what I want to do next is to bring up the texture, which will introduce some more details. And then for the soft dreamy effect, I'm just bringing down the clarity. So maybe like this. And I'm also going to bring down the dehaze. Negative dehaze always works really, really good if you want to add a dreamy effect to your images. That's nice. Finally, one more thing I want to do is to bring down the vibrance, making everything in this image less saturated. That's pretty much it for the basic adjustments. Let's compare to before. You can see a pretty big difference color wise, but also exposure wise, especially in the shadows in the 
foreground on the left side so that's looking great now let's do a bit of masking and that's where we can always hugely transform an image let's open up the masking panel and i want to start by introducing deeper shadows in the image so what i want to do is to focus the viewer's eye on the center i'm going to create some kind of custom vignetting effect let me use a linear gradient and i'm targeting the tree on the left side i want to make this a lot darker turning it into a silhouette i'm going to bring down the exposure for that so i think that's fine of course i don't want to introduce any clipping in the darkest parts either so i'm going to bring up the blacks to counter this effect this way we made this area darker but we're not really losing that much detail Okay, I'm doing the same on the other side. So let's use another linear gradient. I'm targeting this tree. I have to admit, this is not optimal since there are highlights on this tree, but I still want to make the far right side a little darker by bringing down the exposure like this. Then right away, I think I want to start with the glowing light effect. Let me use a radial gradient for that. I'm going to target a rather big area right in here i try to place this radial gradient over the brighter area in the center i want to overlap this tree in the center a bit but really really important i really don't want to change the tree on the left side so we need a way to remove this part from this radial gradient and how am i doing that i'm going to subtract and i'm going to choose a select objects mask here change the mode from brush to rectangle select because this will just give you better results and what i'm going to do now is to draw a rectangle around that tree on the left side and lightroom shouldn't have any issues detecting this tree as you can see now that selection is pretty much perfect i might want to adjust that, that radial gradient a little further let's bring the center of it a little further to the top like this maybe let's make it a bit thicker like that as well okay this area i want to make especially bright i'm going to start by bringing up the exposure and at this point we will run into clipping in the very brightest highlights but i think in certain very specific places it is okay to have some clipping included it's not like we're losing any vital details in the sky doing it this way what I'm going to do as well is to bring up the blacks, which again helps with the glowing effect. Let's bring it up to 40 and let's also bring down the dehaze again. Just need to be a little more careful here, but I think that's looking great. We can further brighten up the spot by increasing the whites, again making the clipping a little more obvious, but I think it's worth it. Also, I do think the colors might be a bit warm in this area. I'm going to drop the temperature for that just to introduce a hint of blue. And I want to bring up the saturation in this brightest part of the image. So let's bring it up like that. All right, that's looking great. I kind of want to further work on that glow effect. Let me use another radial gradient. This time I'm making it a bit smaller. So I'm going to target just this bright spot right here again i don't want to affect the tree on the left side so i'm going to subtract with an objects mask one more time select that tree nice then again i'm going to bring up the exposure and i'm going to bring up the blacks okay this might be a bit too much let me readjust that radial gradient i'm going to place it a little further down so it doesn't overlap the brightest highlights right here just a little like this okay nice so one thing that's easily noticeable in enrico's images is the dark tree branches like you can see right here in the center are usually really really dark to add some kind of contrast to the scene i want to do the same for this shot of course so we need a way to target these tree branches we can do that using a luminance range mask with the eyedropper of the luminance range mask i'm going to click right in here which will create a selection that's not perfect, but we can change that. I'm going to use the luminance range adjustments right here. Let's select a little more of the deeper tones. I don't want to target the very dark blacks because we might end up with clipping if we target them, but something like this looks good. And I want to bring down this part right here. And of course, 
Right now we are selecting way too many highlights. So to change that, I'm going to bring down this handle and I'm going to filter out the highlights themselves. So right at this point, you can see we have a pretty good selection for the tree branches, but again, there is there are things selected we don't need. So for a perfect mask, we are going to click on those three dots, go to intersect mask with and choose the brush. And now with the brush, I'm just going to brush over all those tree branches, which I want to make darker. So maybe like this. And then all I need to do is to slightly bring down the exposure. And we can even bring up the contrast. And just like that, using this mask, we made the tree branches darker and added more contrast to the scene. Now there's one more thing I want to do. I think the center still could use a little more brightness. Let me start using a linear gradient. With this linear gradient, I'm going to target this line right here between highlights and shadows. Again, I don't want to affect the tree on the left side, so I'm subtracting a object's mask one more time. And let's take out this part. Then we also have the bottom selected, which I don't need. So let's subject a linear gradient, cleaning up the bottom like this. Okay. Now I think the mask looks pretty good. In here, I'm going to start by bringing down the dehaze, just adding more glow to the brightest spot of this scene. All right, I think that looks great. I'm also going to bring down the clarity, which will make the area look softer. And let's see, what else can we do? I think we can add a little more contrast and maybe even a little temperature, just to give those highlights a bit more warmth. And I think that's pretty much it for the masking adjustment. So let me turn off all these masks. That's what we have started with. And that's the image after the masking adjustment. So you can clearly see masking is a vital part of creating this very specific look. And I also think Enrico does use a lot of masks when editing his images. Now, what about the color grading? Let's take a look at the color mixer. I want to basically only work with the saturation here. And what I want to do is to reduce everything except green to make the green color stand out more. That means I'm going to bring down the orange tones, which will desaturate the forest floor. Then I'm going to bring down the yellow tones quite a bit, which will take out the warmth from the green tones. And to counter that effect, because we're losing a bit too much saturation, I'm going to bring up the green saturation. So to get a nice fresh look in here. All right, that's looking great. I'm also going to bring down the blue saturation. There is a bit too much blue in this image, so that should help. Okay, I think that's looking pretty decent. We can also use the split toning in the color grading panel. I just want to work on the shadows a little bit, giving them a cold color tone, but a very, very subtle one. So I'm going to set up the hue to a blue tone right here. And I'm going to just slightly push the saturation to have a hint of blue in the very darkest shadows of the scene. Okay. And finally, let's also head into the calibration tab. Usually what I do is to bring down the blue primary hue for my images. But this doesn't really work if we want to emulate Enrico Fossati's look. So instead of bringing down the blue primary hue, I'm going to bring it up very gently, which will kind of push the green tones a bit further. All right, and I think that's it for the raw adjustments. Again, let's take a look at before really quick. You can see we now have a totally different image with a lot of glow involved. The only thing left to do is a little bit of focus stacking. So I'm going to do that in Photoshop. I know there are different tools to do that. Photoshop isn't the best, but I just prefer the efficiency of it. So what we need to do is to copy these editing settings from our base image to all the other images. I'm going to select the base image, hold down shift key and down below in the film strip, click on the last image. Then we want to click on synchronize, make sure to check all and hit synchronize. Once that is done, the next step is to open these images in Photoshop and we want to open them all in one single Photoshop file. So how can we do that? Right click on one of the images, go to edit in and here choose open as layers in Photoshop. Once this is done, your Photoshop file should look something like this with all images stacked in the layers menu like this. Changing the focus of my lens will kind of change 
in the alignment here, you can see we need to fix that. So I'm selecting all these layers, then go to edit and choose auto align layers and simply hit OK. This will nicely align everything as you can see right here. Now all we need to do is the focus stacking. So again, with all layers selected, go to the edit menu, choose auto blend layers, here stack images and hit OK. And here we have the focus stacked version of this image. And that's about it for editing like Enrico Fossati. At least that is my approach, how I would do it. Let me know what you think about this tutorial. If this video was helpful, maybe like the video and maybe even subscribe to this channel. I would be really, really happy about that. So thank you very much for watching this video and hopefully see you all next time.